Okay, everybody, I am so excited today because I am joined by McCabe Sly, aka Tommy Slater in Fear Street Part 2, 1978, which is out now. If you haven't watched the film, come back after you've seen it. We're going to be talking spoilers here. Uh, so how are you doing today, McCabe? I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm doing excellent. I'm super excited to talk to you as well and talk about the movies. Yeah, man, dude, this this movie blew my mind how good it was. I wasn't expecting to be this good. And you're a big reason why it's so awesome. And, you know, what's interesting is you being like this new actor on the scene in the public eye. People get really jealous. It's such an awesome role for you to land. How did you even get this part? How did it come about? It was interesting, actually. Um, I auditioned for three different roles in these movies. Um, and the third one was ended up being Tommy. Um, I started out, actually, I auditioned for um, Peter and Caleb, who Jeremy Ford played. Um, so Sam's boyfriend in 1994, and then a, a character in, in 1666. Then I auditioned for um, Simon, who Fred Hetchinger played beautifully. Um, and I'm very glad I didn't have to feel like I could have done that or wouldn't have done that. Um, <clears throat> and then Carmen brought me back for um, Carmen brought me back in for for Tommy and for Matt Thomas in, in 1666. Um, and I read for it and and literally felt like I got a call about a week later saying, um, you know, it's 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 time to go to Atlanta and, and get fitted for it. Um, so it felt like it was a long process in general. But once it started moving, it started moving really fast. So when you say go to Atlanta and get fitted for it, did they throw a sack on your head when you went over there? <laughs> they, they, they started to, they started to fit me for, well, actually it was interesting. They did throw a sack on my head and they did, they did start molding it, but they were also fitting me for 1666 because we shot that before 1978. Oh, wow. Um, okay. We shot it kind of non-sequentially because so many of the cast from 94 shows up again in 1666. Um, but they threw a mask on my head. It was 98 degrees. It was hot. Uh, Lloyd, my stunt double, who who played Nightwing beautifully in '94, was there with me going through it. So I felt like I had a a, a friend for it. But it was it was hot and and bothered for sure. When when you were cast as Tommy, did you always know it was going to be the Camp Nightwing killer, or did they hold that information you for a bit? You know, it was interesting. The audition sides did not say that, so I did not know. Um, but as I, as I got there, obviously the first character I was playing was in 1666. So I still had a little bit of run up time to feel like I was prepared for it. Um, which was kind of nice actually, because it was, there was still enough of a surprise, um, and enough distance for the audition where I felt like I was able to be Tommy in the audition and not worry about having to be ominous. Um, and then, you know, we get to the set for 66 and, and we start learning about Tommy and who he turns into. Interesting. That That's an exciting tease in itself right there. So, when we look and we first meet Tommy in this film, you know, would you describe that version of Tommy as Ziggy refers to him later on as my sister's perfect, boring, virgin boyfriend? Is that how you saw Tommy Slater, the character? I'd like to think Tommy's a little cooler than that. But no, I, I, think, <laughs> I think that uh, I think there's there's a little bit of guilty by association for both sides with Tommy and Cindy because they really are um, just doing their best to to make a life for themselves and, and, and get out of shady side and um, try to find good, wholesome success somewhere else. And I think that um, to a certain extent, that's true. He's a good guy. He's working hard. He's working at this camp. He loves the kids um, and he loves Cindy. And I think that that's, that's kind of what he's about. See, that's what's so impressive about your performance though, is you play that so well, but then as the film goes on, you have to start playing a character who's being possessed by a witch. Was that challenging those progressing that correctly through the, the movie? Well, I, I, first of all, I appreciate that. It's very kind of you to say. Um, and then I, I think I think it was it was fun. I mean, the, the way we shot it was um, semi out of sequence. So it wasn't quite that we had the, the actual progression going on. So it was almost like playing two characters in the same movie um, because we would uh, because we were on different locations for this. We were at the camp and then we were also on a soundstage for part of the interior shots. Um, it was it was a lot of jumping in and out of playing, you know, fully possessed, you know, bloodied up Nightwing killer or throwing the mask on and then jumping back into playing Tommy, who, who loves his girlfriend and, and has never had sex before. Um, <laughs> and, and so I think that that made it it wasn't even it was it was difficult, but it was a fun, difficult. It made me feel uncomfortable in the best way possible. And I felt like 
Lee did a, such a great job of helping me drop into each of those different scenarios, whether they were possessed or not. So when you are fully possessed now and you're chasing after people, you get to be this awesome killer here. You're going to have a lot of Jason Voorhees comparisons in this character, <laughs> the Camp Nightwing uh, killer. And I think it's really impressive how well you do those scenes. Did you study any of those famous, you know, slasher killers to prepare for those parts? Yeah. So it was interesting. I think that to Lee's credit, she did a great job of sort of working with me because we were already on set for 66. And this is something that I think she did so incredibly well. She she was able to be fully present with what she was shooting and also be fully prepared for the next thing that we were doing. We shot these three movies back to back to back. And so we did a great a great thing, I think, which was literally going through all of the references we could think of for this character, whether it was Jason Voorhees or um, the Shining, you know, and, and looking at those performances and trying to pull from those and and keep keep it unique and keep it our own, but also really pay homage to to what has come before us. Yeah, and and you mentioned The Shining, and I, I really felt that in the moment with the axe when you're hitting into the door there and you open the doors. It was a great moment. Now I'm wondering too, while watching is how heavy is that axe? I don't think people understand like for an actor, it's not the it's a workout you're getting, right? Like was that something that was like challenging a bit? That uh, was so fun. I I actually, um, much to the production insurance company's dismay, probably argued for that <laughs> axe to be in more scenes than not. Sure, um, sure. It's got some weight to it, but that helps. And also, I I I played baseball, so I love swinging stuff around and and hitting stuff. And and I think that 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 made it so much fun. I was jealous of of Lloyd getting to do it in '94 and break down that door, but I I was happy to get my chance in '78. So that's what I think people are going to wonder too, when you see something like this. So the scenes we see with the sack on the head, did you actually have to wear the sack during filming at all? Or is it all the stunt double? Yeah. So it's a little bit of a mix of both. And, and it's, it's really, I think a credit to Lloyd, how seamless he makes it look because it, you know, I can't tell the difference. My friends can't tell the difference. The cast can't tell the difference. Um, and I think that that that's what makes it so fun is, is that, you know, you, it's one character the whole time and, I think he did a great job, but it's it's me in there sometimes and him in there the others, and we're both we were both struggling through the humidity and the heat together in that thing. It was, <laughs> it was something else. So, is there a sick thrill you get to watching yourself chopping people's heads off? You know what? There there is, and I I I need to preface that by saying that um, I know it's fake. I'm not actually getting <laughs> off. I'm feeling like I'm killing people. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there's definitely, you know, it's fun. It's 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 one of those things where it's it's playing pretend. It's it's like when you were a kid and you had got to run around and imagine things. And I think that I wasn't imagining those things again. It <laughs> terribly creepy, but um, no, it's definitely fun, especially when you get to watch it with the person you killed. Like you're just next to them and you know they're alive. <laughs> and you're like, hey, wasn't that fun when your head fell off? Well, yeah, we're cool, right? And and, and you know, it was a lot of fun. Did you have a favorite kill or just favorite oh. moment in the whole film you could pick even that you just, that sticks with you the most? Man, I think, I gotta say what, I mean, killing, killing, uh, it's a tough one. <laughs> it's a tough one. There are so many. I mean, I like, there's, there's a moment where I, where I walk into the arts and craft cabin and I think I just love the way it's, it's come together at the end. Um, where where the, they they turn they have the the lights go out and they turn on the lighter and then I'm there and I think that's just a cool moment. Obviously, cutting off Gary's head is is like one of my favorite things I've ever. That's done. my favorite kill. I was oh my god, <laughs> it's I mean, the best moment. It, it was it was just such a fun day. There were so many there were so many. Uh, it, we had one we had one shot to get that right in a sense because if we were using the real axe. And it was a dummy. So if I missed, you could see the cut on like the fake neck or the fake head. So we had to get it right there. And and I think luckily we got it good enough to where it it, it played. But it that was so much fun. And then the body coming down and like falling. Oh my god! It's just it's just too good. It's just so the good. baseball playing all comes full circle to actually use those skills of swinging right well, there. That's it was funny. There was another shot where like. Lee wanted me to hit a mark on the ground and get the ax stuck. And she wanted me to get it right between the boards so it wouldn't mess the wood up. And I was being fake confident. I said I could do it. And then I did it. And I got so <laughs> surprised that I like, like looked and said, Hey, I did it. And she's like, stay in the scene. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, the baseball definitely came into play. It was fun. It was a lot. Of That's fun. awesome. Um, so switching gears a, a little bit. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of people are excited about this one too, because you had this big movie premiere. I think you guys have a couple. Um, 
what is that like for you being on a red carpet with names like Gillian Jacobs and Sadie Sink and working with Sadie yeah. Sink? Like, how has that been for you? It's been, it's been, it's, it's actually been pretty surreal just because I think that, uh, the way I met Gillian was was funny. We went to um, in the middle of filming. We had a short break for the Stranger Things. I think it was season four premiere. We went all went to the the premiere of it and, and got to to sit in. And I ended up sitting next to Gillian. I had never met her before, and so we just hung out and got to know each other. Then um, working with Sadie, I think we we actually shot scenes together. Um, was like a master class in in how far I feel like I have to go as an actor and a performer. I mean, she's phenomenal and and so up for anything. I think one of the best parts about working with her was, you know, how ready she was to be like physical. I mean, the, the scenes we have are not exactly like, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Um, you know, I'm throwing her into a wall and <laughs> trying to choke me with the bag. And it's like, right. you know, to, to feel like I've got, a, 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 she's matching my energy with that. It was awesome. And to feel like I had to up my energy to match hers was even better. It, you know, it brought me back to feeling like I was playing sports again and, and trying to, you know, match up with somebody who was just as good, definitely better than I was. Oh, that that's awesome to hear. And, you know, Sadie Sank has this huge following. So that her fans are just gonna be awesome to hear that too. Um, so are you then prepared mentally for the attention you're about to get with the success this trilogy is already having, but the reaction, how many people are gonna watch this film and you get to be the killer here, which is a huge, huge thing. Like, so are you ready for that attention? Uh, I, I don't think it's something that I can prepare for. I think if I tried to, I would either overestimate or underestimate it and it just wouldn't work. I'm trying to take it one one day at a time. I think one of the benefits and, and sort of cheat codes I have is my mom was an actress at one point. Um, and she was on a show called LA Law in the 90s, which was a very popular law show and um, experienced oh, wow. some level of fame back pre sort of social media. And so she's been a real help in terms of sort of knowing what to expect and having some good ideas about how to handle it. That's awesome. So, you know, coming from that, being around it, I guess, in your family, was there, what was the moment for you when you knew you wanted to do this? Man, I mean, she was really great about never pushing it on me. I, I didn't really even start acting until I was in high school. And um, it, because I played a spring sport, our school needed more guys to audition for the fall musical, which happened to be West Side Story my senior year. Um, and so I, I did that musical and I fell in love with it immediately. I got a lead role for, for whatever reason, our, our theater director thought I could do it. Um, but that was the first time I really acted at all. And, and I just loved being on stage and feeling like, you know, I knew there was a crowd, but I couldn't see any faces. And so it felt nice to feel like I was kind of just up there with my castmates and it was, it was really just a phenomenal experience. And my current manager happened to be in one of the audiences and, and so signed me out of there. And from there we went and, and it's been, you know, a, a blessing and a dream ever since. That's amazing. Do you, do you have any actors or actresses you currently look up to? Oh man. Uh, I think my top one is, is Jonathan Majors. And I, I was lucky enough to spend three years working with him and, and getting to know him. And that's, that's my big brother. And he's, someone I look up to in, in, in all shapes and size, in all forms, really. I mean, he's, he's the man. So I think that's, that's the guy I look up to at the moment. That's a great answer. Um, and look, you've been giving me great answers this whole interview. It's been so fun to talk to you before I let you go, McCabe, because people come if and ask this, can you give us a little tease about 19, I mean, 60, 1666, the third film coming up? Cause we do see you in the little preview they give us at the end of two. So Anything yeah. kind of give us a little what we might expect? Yeah, you can expect me to, instead of having blood on my face, I have dirt on my face. I have, I have blacked out teeth. I think the one thing that I love about these, these movies is um, they each have a sort of a different theme. So 94 is sort of like a scream vibe. 78 brings you back to the slasher films. 66 is the scariest one. 66 Ooh, okay. really gets under your skin, into your head and makes you scared to walk around your house at night. Like it's, it's awesome. mentally terrifying. So I think people are going to really love it. And then it jumps back to 94 at the end and, and we get to have some fun at the end of it, but it really gets you at the beginning. Oh, I, I can't wait. So you heard it from him, everybody check out McCabe as Tommy Slater. If you haven't, for some reason, watch part two, it's out now, watch it now. And then this Friday, he'll be back in part three. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, McCabe, and I hope to talk to you again in the future one day. Thank you. It was nice to meet you, man.